Hi everyone. It is Rhonda here in Houston, Texas, and this video is going to go up on my Prepper Rhonda YouTube channel. Um, this video, I would like to talk about emergency preparedness, and I know that I have people from all over the, the planet um, here on my Facebook page, and so I just wanted to ask, how is it in your area as far as lockdowns are concerned and everything? Um, <clears throat> I was watching a YouTube live stream right now from one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Backroads Living, Charles and Sandy. I believe they're in Kentucky. And, you know, he helped me just by watching his video for a short time. He helped me remember that, you know, just because things are nice exactly where I am does not mean that it's, you know, nice everywhere else. Um, one of the things that really, well, I mean, there's places that are that are going on lockdown right now and some very basic things are unavailable in other parts of the world so if anybody's noticing that you know if you just leave me a comment uh, about what's happening where you are you know because I'll be honest with you I'm not you know I'm not noticing that here in Houston um, Houston is not locked down uh, Texas has lifted their mask mandates um, and so, uh, I, I'm not noticing any problems. I'm, I'm not having any problems getting anything. However, um, last year, I was definitely preparing for anything. And I ended up needing a lot of those things because Texas froze in February, okay? Texas froze in February. And so because I was preparing for that I was able to have what I needed plus I was able to you know share with my uh, neighbors and some family so <clears throat> um, is anybody noticing you know I know that normally I don't read the comments when I make a live stream but today I would like to so uh, Mr. Bishop Timothy Mr. Uh, Say No <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, are y'all noticing anything in your area that is uh, hard to find? If you wouldn't mind, let me know. Um, you know, here in the United States, we have something called Dollar Tree. We have a lot of different dollar stores, right? Giant Dollar, uh, I don't know, different ones. And so... At Dollar Tree, we can get things that are really good, uh, quality, a lot of times name brand items, and it's for a dollar. And a lot of times it's even a full size, you know, it's not small, um, which I've noticed that some other dollar stores, they have the small, you know, it's small. So when you add it up, you're not really saving anything. So um, that's where I get a lot of my emergency preparedness items. I, you can get food, you can get hygiene, um, you can get tools, I mean, anything you can think of, really. Anything that you could probably get at a Walmart or, you know, places like that, you can get it at the Dollar Tree. Um, I also know that Dollar Tree has a website. I don't know if they ship internationally or what, but now I do know that when you order online, at, here, at least here in Houston, you can't just get one thing like if I wanted you know I don't know one Bible okay because they sell Bibles there also I couldn't just buy one I would have to buy a case but the case is like 12 so that's twelve dollars for 12 Bibles you know so that's awesome and they have uh, different ones they have different colors like they have a white one they have a black one they have a large print one you know so that's really amazing so and I've actually checked them out and make sure that they weren't, um, how should I put this? What's the word I'm looking for here? Like a Bible that's not even true. You know what I mean? Like, because I'll be honest with you guys, I did notice a brand of Bibles called uh, Zonderman, Zonderman, something like that. Zonderman, Zon, I don't know exactly. I have to check it out, but it's definitely with a Z and it ends with an man, okay? 
And those Bibles, y'all, I do not recommend those Bibles at all. Um, I've, I've found so many uh, mistakes. I've found verses that were left out. And they also have um, Bibles specifically, like they have a girl's teenage Bible. Now, that's the one that I looked at because I had a teenage girl at the time. And I just opened it. And it just opened exactly to a page that I was just like, there is no way in the world that I'm giving this to my teenager because I'll tell you the truth, it was talking about things that a teenager, <laughs> a teenager does not need to be learning about from a Bible. You know what I mean? Weird stuff, guys. Weird stuff, all right? I'm not even going to get into it, but you don't want your daughter reading that. So, if you happen to have one of those Bibles, you might want to just throw it away. I wouldn't even recommend giving it to somebody because why would you want to pass on nonsense, you know? It's really sad that in this day and age that we can't even trust every single Bible that is sold to us, you know, but hey, I I don't know. I'm just here. Take things upon your own understanding. Stay safe no matter what they say and do. Amen. Keep the faith and you will not be alone. Jesus Christ teaches us. Yes. <clears throat> Let me see who said that. I don't know who said that. Who said that? Mr. Bishop. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. And I'm, you know, I'm definitely not one to be fear-mongering to the people. But at the same time, you know, if somebody were to come to me and say, Hey, Rhonda, you know, I'm hungry and stuff like that. I don't want to, I don't want to be in a position to say, Well, I can't help you, you know. And I definitely don't want to be in a position where I'm being greedy and being like, Oh, all this is for me, you know. All, <laughs> you know, thankfully, the Lord God has, um... Like, I, I don't have much of an appetite, you know, like I used to. I used to be, I used to be hungry a lot, you know, when I was super morbidly obese. But now, I eat with moderation, you know, and I also don't have to restrict myself anymore. You know, I used to be on a keto diet. I used to only eat, you know, what, vegetables and, and meat. And now, I don't have to do that anymore. Now, I can eat whatever I want, and as long as I'm not you know, eating all of it, you know what I'm saying, like, if I buy, what, a half a gallon of ice cream, I'm not gonna eat the whole half a gallon of ice cream in one sitting, I bought some ice cream the other day, I put a little, you know, one of those small, what is that, uh, six ounce styrofoam cups, I filled that up, ate that, and the ice cream's still sitting there, so, you know, that's the Lord did that, y'all, so anyway, uh, so, I, I heard about a country where, and I don't remember, so y'all can check it out. Y'all can look at Mr. Charles' uh, live stream. It's on my page because he he's very inform he's informed. Okay, he watches the news. I do not watch the news. You know, I, I check it out. I say, oh, how's the weather today and stuff like that. I know that things are going wrong in the countries, the world. I know that. And um, you know, right now, of course, I'm studying so that um, you know I can go over there to the White House and do what I can do to fix things but in, in addition to that you know I need to be mindful about our neighbors all over the globe you know and uh, just know what's happening with them so anyway uh, I procrastinated last year or earlier this year I bought a 55 gallon drum to fill water from Augustine Farms I bought that from Walmart I got it on sale and then I didn't fill it up. It's still not filled up. So, now, it's a good thing, in reality, that I didn't fill it up. Because, um, I ended up moving. And had I filled it up, I would not have been able to move it. But, now, I'm going to be here for a good bit. So, every day, you know, I've been doing things here. Hi, uh, Mr. Peters. Rhonda. Okay, it's just Rhonda. All right, just one A. All right. Anyway, hi. So, um, yeah. So that that drum from Augustine Farms, it has everything that you would need. It has a uh, a pump, and it has the chemicals that you put in the water so that the water, you know, because when you when you leave water for a long time things can grow in there, you know, so it, ta it tells you how to clean the drum before you put it in there, then you fill it up, 
and then you put the chemicals in there also it tells you to elevate it you elevate your your plastic drum you don't want to put it exactly on the concrete because if you do the concrete can leach into the plastic and ruin your water you know that's going to be black that's i mean why even do that you know it's it's really a trip because the augustin farms plastic you know it's a super heavy duty plastic drum reminds me a whole lot of you know when i would go visit in trinidad um over there you know where my my parents were from um in trinidad back when i used to visit which was like in the 70s and you know the 80s um my grandfather and grandmother they didn't have running water in their house they had a they had a nice house they had a bathroom and everything but what they had to do was like twice a week or once a week i'm not really sure they would get one of those it was not a plastic drum but it was exactly like a big barrel you know and it was metal and <laughs> i remember like my cousins like they would do some kind of maneuver with it to move it from the end of the the street all the way to the house and they would have to get little buckets of it you know um and and do what they needed to do fill the toilet uh fill the toilet what is that tank to flush the toilet you know fill up buckets of water to take a bath to take a you know shower like that and then they also had this really large they called it galvanized um <clears throat> water catchment system in the back to where it could catch all the rainwater now okay we're talking about a tropical island okay so <laughs> And, and Trinidad is so beautiful and wonderful that it rains for a little while every single day. I mean, it's like clockwork. And so, it like, you know, water's everywhere. So people don't probably, I don't know how it is now, but back then, they didn't have to really worry about, oh, this water's dirty. You see what I'm saying? They didn't have to worry about the rainwater being dirty. Here in the United States, I wouldn't drink the rainwater. I wouldn't, you know, because there's just too much um, pollution. And, you know, just because things go up in the clouds and they come back down, that doesn't mean to me that it's clean. I don't let my stray cats, I don't like my stray cats to drink um, water from outside. I, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit weird, but I don't trust polluted water. And unfortunately, in the big cities here in the United States, that's a problem you know pollution smog all that going up into our ecosystem coming down into our water um i would not now if i was if i was in an emergency situation i sure would and that's another thing there's something called a life straw that you can buy and it will filter water from anywhere okay so like let's say you were i don't know out somewhere okay and you needed water you're in a you're in a bad situation right you're out in the woods you're out in the jungle i don't know and you could actually probably if you were in the jungle that water would be clean but anyway i'm getting off the subject so you could actually take the life straw and put it in a puddle of dirty water and suck it up in there and it would filter the water before it got to your mouth okay those the last time i checked you could get those from anywhere from like $12 for one up to about $25. You can buy them in packs of two and three. Um, you know, but I would just really check and see where is it coming from because, you know, I had a problem last year because I ordered one and it was coming from another country and it never came. I did get my money back, but I wanted a life straw. So, um, there's all kinds of websites that you guys can look at and start pricing this stuff something that I'm going to be getting is a solar generated USB charger uh, so that because you know what happened during the Texas deep freeze really showed me hey I need to get certain things that I did not have okay like my cell phone died so I, I could have used a, a solar generated charger because even though it was freezing outside the Sun was still out so I could have made my way out there, put my charger up there, and been able to charge my phone, been able to charge, if I had other things, I didn't have any other thing but my phone at, at that time. Also, something that I got for a dollar at a flea market, 
I wish I had it right here. But anyway, it is an old fashioned, it's really an antique oil lamp, the kind that uses kerosene. It might use paraffin also. Um, I have to check into that because uh, I believe paraffin wax is kosher, it's clean burning, but it definitely uses um, kerosene. And I'm really looking forward to using that. Trying, you know, I already have it, I cleaned it out. It's got a good wick in there. I just need to get the kerosene. So for me, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making a list of what I have. And then I'm going to see what do I need. I already have an idea of what I need. But I'm just going to make an inventory and then, you know, go from there. Because the way that I look at it, Houston, Texas, we get, we have problems with floods. We have problems with heat waves, droughts, um hurricanes so that really kind of covers all the bases and then with what happened with the deep freeze in February nobody I wasn't expecting that but thankfully you know I was prepared anyway you know because I had a winter coat I had extra blankets but now I want to take it a step further um, you know get myself one of those outdoor uh, what is that like a fireplace, like an outdoor, how do you, I'm saying it wrong, but pretty much it's where you can make a campfire, okay, I can make a campfire right outside my house, and I know there's a technical way to put that, and you, you know, there's a lot of these are fancy, you know, if you look them up, it's like, oh man, can I afford that, but if you think about it, yeah, you know, you don't have to get the fancy one, and you know what guys, I've noticed that if you'll just kind of think outside the box, you know, you hear that term all the time, and don't get yourself panicky, but just kind of think about the way that people do things from the old country is the only way that I can put it, okay? Because that's how I'm learning a lot, is I'm remembering how people did things in Trinidad. You know, how did they do things in Trinidad? Because if people in Trinidad, they know how to make something out of nothing. You know what I mean? They don't, you know. So, they don't worry about anything in Trinidad back when I was there. Maybe it's different now. I'm going to visit soon. The Lord says the same. But um, I learned so much from my grandmother and my grandfather, you know, just watching them, how they handled things, to where I don't get worried, you know, about, oh, this might happen, that might happen, you know. But uh, not everybody has a grandma and a grandpa like I did. Uh, so don't be scared, but be prepared. <laughs> I haven't said that in a while. <laughs> Don't be scared. Be prepared, you know. What is it that your family uses on a daily basis, you know? Do you need pampers? Do you need baby wipes? Do you need, you know, your cleaning supplies? When you go to the store, get a little extra, you know. When you make your grocery list and you say, okay, I need laundry detergent, get an extra one. Get an extra um, dish liquid, okay? just so that you have a little extra. Um, a lot of times people will shop for the week, shop for a couple days, and that's where you can end up having a problem. You know, what I did last year was every time I went to the store, I had a budget and I said, okay, and it, you know, it changed. Like it started out where I would spend an extra $5 every time I went to the store. And then as I became more and more stocked up with things, I was able to increase that amount to the point where to the point where you don't even hardly need to go to the store ever you know it's like okay I have everything maybe I need some vegetables you know maybe I need an onion <laughs> you know so um, another thing that I was able to get was a uh, what do you call that a big freezer a chest freezer now I need to go ahead and get a generator now because if I fill that freezer up and then we lose power, I'm probably going to cry. <laughs> or I'm going to be having a big barbecue and inviting everybody like, come on, we got to eat all this meat. So, you know, a generator would definitely be a good idea and that's something I need to look into. There's also something, um, a solar generated refrigerator. It's not you know, a full-size refrigerator, but it can hold some things in there. It can actually freeze. It can have ice in there. It can have the things that you might need. Also, you know, think about medicine. Think about, does your family member have insulin? Does that insulin need to be refrigerated? 
If so, then that might be high on your priority list to go ahead and get a solar generated or some kind of, um, you know, additional way to keep your items cold without electricity. Okay, so it's not really anything to worry about, but, you know, start. If you have not started, start, you know, because you don't want to get caught with your pants down, you know, like a lot of people did in February. You know, people in Texas, they're not used to that kind of weather. We're not used to cold, freezing weather. We're happy if we see some snow every now and then. So, you know, but right now, there's so many things going on all over the place, right? But there's there's wild wildfires, there's droughts, there's weird weather. That's all I can really say. There's weird weather happening. So, you know, figure out what is it that you need, what is it that your family needs. If you know you like coffee, if that's a daily thing, then make sure you have some coffee because you don't want to be in an emergency going through caffeine withdrawals and yelling at everybody. <laughs> Another thing to think about is this is when this is when you get yourself um you're pretty prepared right so for me i when i get to the point where i'm prepared which i'm rebuilding because i gave away every pretty much everything um when you when you're stocked up then you can start thinking about barter items okay then you can start thinking about what is it that i can buy that if you know, we didn't have electricity or we didn't have water or whatever for a, a period of time. What is it that I could have that I don't use that I could trade? For example, I don't drink, right? I don't like liquor. So, a lot of people do, unfortunately. So, if I had a couple of bottles of liquor in my preps, I could probably buy a cow. <laughs> I could probably trade it for a cow if I needed to, depending on, you know, who I asked. Or, you know, hey, I've got a six-pack of beer. Can I have a chicken? <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. But, hey, you never know. Um, it, you know, I don't have a need for certain things, but I can have that in my preps to trade if I needed to. So that's something else that you can think about. If there's something of value that you don't really need, that you don't really like, that you're never going to use, you know, you might want to go ahead and have it just in case that you might trade it, right? Because in a situation where the grid goes down, there's no electricity, there's no water, there's probably not going to be stores open, there's probably not going to be the ability to get money out of an ATM or from your bank, you know, that's another thing, you might want to keep some cash, but cash may not even be valuable because if people can't use it at the store then what do they want it for so all right so uh oh and medicine i might have already mentioned that make sure you have all your medicine that you need you know um get you some hydrogen peroxide some uh first aid things band-aids vitamins you know all that kind of thing all right so nobody's really participating over here <laughs> that's okay all right so um like i say don't don't freak yourself out but at the same time don't be lackadaisical okay you know somebody asked uh is it biblical to prep okay and i i feel like what they were trying to say was you know are you are you acting like you don't have faith in the lord to take care of you okay or your family Yes, it is biblical to prep because the Lord God is giving us the ability to do that. Why should we not do anything and then we have to wait for the FEMA truck? Then we have to wait for a handout. Then we have to wait for somebody else to help us because if the if there's no power, if there's no water and all this kind of stuff, what are you going to do? Not be hungry? Not be thirsty? Not need to use the restroom? Not need to take a shower? So think about it, you know. I don't want to be a burden to the government and I don't want to be walking around to my neighbors saying, hey, do you have a cup of coffee? So with all that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Thank you very much for watching. Please share this video. Actually, I am going to upload it, but yesterday I tried to upload uh, from a live stream and it didn't work. So anyway, um, I have the Jesus Life Ministry channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And this one is going on the Prepper Rhonda YouTube channel. That's P-R-E-P-P-E-R-R-H-O-N-D-A. 
All right. Thank you very much. Don't forget to pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I'll talk to you soon if the Lord says the same. Bye-bye.